Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. And on April 14th, 2016, RetroPie 3.7 was released. I'm going to show you guys how to install it. Now this is going to be a multi-part tutorial on installing RetroPie, setting up your controller, adding ROMs, adding Kodi Media Center, adding BIOSes. This is going to cover everything you need to know about RetroPie. This is part two. First part is in the description and a link right there on screen now. That is the hardware you need to run RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, or your Raspberry Pi 0. Let's get started on installing RetroPie 3.7 onto our SD card. So first up, we're going to need the RetroPie image, and they have released a new website, which is beautiful. I mean, it looks great. So uh, all these links will be in the description. This is retropie.org.uk. And this is a full dedicated RetroPie website. So we're going to go to downloads. We need to download the RetroPie image, depending on which version of the Raspberry Pi you have. You would choose one of these. Now I am going down here to the RetroPie setup script for 3.7 because we are running 3.7. And I have a Raspberry Pi 3. As you see here, this is the image for a Raspberry Pi 2 or Raspberry Pi 3. We want to download this. It's going to start downloading here. It's about one gigabyte, depending on your connection speed. It will be downloaded in no time. Next up, we're going to need a software to flash the RetroPie image to the SD card. What I use, and pretty much everybody else in the RetroPie Raspberry Pi community, is Win32 Disk Imager. Now this is super simple, easy software, no viruses. As you see, we have 80,000 downloads this week alone. And it's very easy to download. It's free and user friendly. So just go ahead and click on your download link here. It will start to download. Now I have this installed already on my desktop. And finally, I suggest you download SD card formatter. Now, if you have a fresh SD card that you have never flashed anything for a RetroPie to, you should be all right at f by installing RetroPie now. But I do recommend downloading SD card formatter, formatting your drive. After you install an image onto your SD card for the Raspberry Pi, and you place it back into your PC, it will only show as 60 megabytes, anywhere from 30 to 60 megabytes of free space left. When you use SD card formatter, that will bring us back to the full size of our SD card. I'm going to close this. I have RetroPie 3.7 downloaded on my desktop. And when you download it, it comes as a zipped image. So we are going to need to extract this either using WinRAR or 7-Zip. So we're going to right click, I'm going to extract to RetroPie version 3.7. So inside of the folder we just extracted, we have the RetroPie disk image file. Now if this file shows up as a image.gz, if you go to rename, if it has a gz at the end, just go ahead and delete the gz. Some people have had that problem. I haven't, but I have noticed a lot of people online have had that problem. We're going to close out of here. Now, we need to make sure we have our SD card inserted into our PC, either by a USB SD card reader or your built-in SD card reader on your laptop or desktop. This is a freshly formatted 16 gigabyte Samsung Class 10 card. It is freshly formatted, but I'm gonna walk you through SD card formatter. We'll just open up SD card formatter. And make sure that the drive letter is the letter of your SD card. So my SD card is F. Definitely SD card is F. You can rename your card here. 
I'm going to leave mine as SD card. My size is 14.9. It's a 16 gigabyte card. We're just going to click format. This will delete everything on your card. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Quick and easy. Format it. FAT32. We are ready to flash the RetroPie image to the SD card. What we're going to do now is open up Win32 Disk Imager. Very easy. The blue folder here is we will, where we will load our image that we extracted from. So I'm going to click on the blue folder. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go to my RetroPie 3.7. And inside, this is the folder we extracted. We're just going to double click on the image disk image file. Now it is loaded and ready to flash. You need to make sure you are flashing to your SD card. Like I said before, my SD card is drive letter F. We're just going to go ahead and write. It will tell us writing to this physical device can corrupt the device. That's why we use SD card formatter to bring it back to life. Yes. And while this is going, I am going to fast forward this for you guys. Okay, it was successfully flashed to the SD card. Now all we need to do is take the SD card from the computer, place it into the Raspberry Pi, plug in our power and our HDMI cable, plus a keyboard or controller, and boot the Raspberry Pi. We're going to move to the Raspberry Pi now for the initial boot and setup of the first controller. Okay, so upon first boot, it automatically resizes the file system as you saw. Now it brings us to the welcome screen. Um, I have plugged into my Raspberry Pi 3 an Ethernet cable, a wired Xbox 360 controller, my keyboard and mouse, HDMI, SD card, and my power. So, I'm going to set up this controller. It's very simple to set up your wired controller. We're going to hold A on the gamepad. And now we're into the configuration. Just follow the on-screen prompts and you should have no problem. So we're in the emulation station front end. And as we're scrolling through here, we can see we have a few emulators. And inside of some of these emulators, we have a few games. Most of it is homebrew, demos, or remakes of games. All legal stuff to own. Now, we don't see any PlayStation 1, SNES, N64, or any of the really awesome emulators that we all love to play. We need to add ROMs. Now, there are two ways to add ROMs. First way is through your USB stick. Now remember that when adding ROMs through your USB stick, you cannot add a ROM that is bigger than 500 megabytes. So we'll need to use network to add the bigger games for Dreamcast, PlayStation, so on and so on. But if you would like to add your SNES ROMs, your N64 ROMs, and a lot of the older systems, then you can use your USB stick no problem. We are going to go back to the computer and I'm going to show you how to set up your USB stick to install ROMs on your Raspberry Pi. We are going to leave the Raspberry Pi running and plugged in. Also, we need to be connected to a network. I am on Ethernet. If you have Wi-Fi, you need to scroll to your RetroPi page here. Press A on your controller and we need to scroll down to Wi-Fi, which is right here. And you can configure your Wi-Fi from this screen here. Super simple, we'll just go in here. 
Now you can see connect to Wi-Fi network. You will need to use your keyboard in this. Actually, you don't need to use your keyboard anymore in this. You used to have to just use your keyboard. I am using the controller now. You can connect to any Wi-Fi network that you have. I am on Ethernet, so I do not need to do this. So we are going to the PC now. You are going to need a USB drive. And this is super simple, guys. So now I'm going to show you guys how to transfer ROMs to your Raspberry Pi using a USB stick. Now, like I said before, you cannot transfer any big ROMs like Dreamcast games or PSP games using the USB stick. It does not allow you to transfer anything bigger than a 500 megabyte file. It actually could be smaller than that, around 200 megabytes. But if we're transferring old school emulator ROMs, nothing is usually bigger than 100 megabytes. So... With that said, you're going to need to insert your USB stick into your PC. Now, I prefer using a clean USB stick. Now, I have mine here, and it is formatted FAT32. It's only an 8 gig. This is an older 2.0 stick that I had laying around. So, it, you need to be formatted FAT32. And inside of this USB drive, we're going to create a folder and we're going to name it RetroPie in lowercase. So now that we have the folder created inside of the USB drive, we're going to open up that folder. And as you see, there's nothing inside of this folder. So now we are going to take the USB drive from the PC, place it into the Raspberry Pi while it's running. It's still on. What the Raspberry Pi is going to do is create a folder, folders inside of RetroPi, and one will be named ROMs. And inside of that, we will have all of our emulators listed. And we just drag and drop our ROMs to the corresponding folder, place it back into the Raspberry Pi, and it will transfer the ROMs from the USB stick to the SD card. I am going to take my USB stick from my computer now. Now my USB stick has a light on it, so it's easier to know when it's done writing the files from the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to place it into the Raspberry Pi now. And when your light is done blinking, or you can wait two minutes, and everything should be written to the USB stick. But having a light is a lot better just to see. See, mine's still flashing. It's still writing the files. So my USB stick is done flashing. The Raspberry Pi is on. I'm going to take the USB stick from the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to place it back into the computer. Now we're back at the USB stick and the folder we created, which was RetroPie in lowercase. We're going to open up this folder and inside, after it's done writing from the Raspberry Pi, you will have a BIOS, a configs, and a ROMs folder. We're going to open up ROMs and I'm going to snap it to the side here. So now you go down the list and you can see all of the emulators that are available in RetroPie now. So in order to transfer a few ROMs, we're just going to transfer, open up your SNES folder, locate the ROMs you would like to use. Mine are all unzipped, and I'm just going to copy these, and I'm going to drag them to the USB stick. I'm going to go back on the USB stick, and we are going to transfer some Nintendo 64 ROMs. So I'll open my Nintendo 64 ROM folder here. And I'm just going to transfer a few of these. There's three games there. Now this works the same way with all of the emulators. 
But remember, transferring large ROMs over USB does not work. So if we want to place a few PSP or Dreamcast games on the USB stick, they probably will not transfer to the SD card on the Raspberry Pi. So now that everything's done transferring to the USB stick, a retro Pi folder, ROMs, SNES, these are now on the USB stick. I am going to go back to the Raspberry Pi. We are going to take the USB stick, insert it into the Raspberry Pi, wait a few minutes, then we'll reboot the Raspberry Pi and we should have SNES and N64 listed on the emulation station front screen. So I'm going to place my USB stick that we just transferred the ROMs to into the Raspberry Pi. The light is now flashing. What it is doing now, it is taking the ROMs that we just put on the USB stick and transferring them to the SD card on the Raspberry Pi. Now if you have a light, it makes life so much easier. If you don't have a light, depending on how many ROMs you transferred, it's going to take some time to transfer them. So if you wait five minutes, you should be fine. My light is still flashing here, so it is still transferring. Now this is an older USB 2.0 stick, so it is sort of slow. My light is done flashing on the USB stick. We're just gonna scroll through here and we notice we still don't have our N64 or SNES folder here. We need to reboot the Raspberry Pi one time after we install the ROMs. So I'm gonna press start. I'm going to quit. And I'm going to restart emulation station. Now, if everything went correctly, when I scroll to the right or the left, I should come across an N64 logo and an SNES logo. There's our N64 and the three ROMs I copied. Here's our Super Nintendo and the few ROMs that I copied. And I did not mean to start. Press Start and Select to exit. I double tapped my A button and these are the three ROMs that I transferred to the SNES folder on the USB stick. So that's it guys. That's how to initially set up your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie 3.7 and transferring a few ROMs using USB stick. In my next video, I will show you how to transfer the ROMs using network. If this helped you out at all, hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys.